Alright, now it's time to cut this out. So I have it here just the way it came off of the bolt. If you need it to be wider, you can unfold it and then fold it in half the other way. Um, but this is a pretty small person, so I'm just going to keep it like this. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is take the pattern piece for the body. And I'm going to lay it onto the fabric and I'm going to cut this out one time because there's two pieces or because it's folded here it's going to produce two pieces with just this one cut. Check it. Like that. We have two pieces. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one away. So we're only working with one. And this is going to be the front. We're going to fold it in half. <clears throat> so here's where it ends. I'm going to measure an inch and then cut it off but slowly going back into the neck hole here. Keep it folded in half because this will be the direct center of the chest. And we're gonna cut the, we're gonna cut the chest slit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure about four inches down. Um, keep in mind, we don't want it to be, to go too far down because um, let's actually do three and a half <laughs> because we don't want to expose their chest. I mean, unless that's really what they want. So here now we have the front piece with the slit. All right, now it's time to do the sleeves. So one thing that we want to keep in mind is the order of the fabric um, or the direction of the fabric, I should say. Sometimes they can get pretty particular with the grain. If you don't know what the grain is, it's basically the... The grain is the direction of the threads which are weaved into fabric. The weaving creates a box-like pattern that can be important in how you cut your pattern pieces. You should consider how your pattern pieces go together because you can make sure the grain will be the appropriate direction in each pattern piece. If the grain is off, it can affect the look of your garment. So that might not be important to you, but what will be important to you is if you're using a specific pattern on your fabric. So let's say you have um, a design where there's an obvious top and bottom and side by side. You don't want to cut out your body with them facing upward and then have your sleeves with them facing sideways. So I had the neck and the waist this way, so I'm going to have the armpit and the wrist this way as well. So I'm going to unfold this and we're going to place it on the fabric. Again, just like before, what will happen is we are making one cut on two pieces of fabric. So this one cut will produce two pieces. Here we have the cuff. Um, I have some fabric right here. I think I'm just going to use this for the cuff. I don't really care about the grain be being different and I have a pattern where I can do this. But keep in mind, if you have a pattern fabric where there's an obvious top and bottom, you want this cuff, this um, the longer part, to be in the same direction as the sleeve and the body that we cut out. Check it. So we have two pieces of that. Um, that way it'll fold. Alright, same thing with the collar, or the collar pieces, I should say. You want those in the same direction as everything else. Okay. 
Now I'm just gonna cut out a piece for the um let's get this white stuff off. Oops. This white off. This does not need to be perfect. So I'm just gonna cut off a piece for um this is used to create a clean edge on the slit. You don't have to do this if you're using bias tape. But the slit, I made it three and a half inches long, so I'm going to make it four and a half. Well, let's just make it five so we have lots of extra to work with. And then, let's see, I think it's about four inches. It'd be all right. So we're going to cut this to shape. Um, and you know what? We only need one piece of it, too, and I cut two out, so... Oh, it's been a day. Okay, so for the interfacing, what we need is a piece for each cuff and then a piece for each collar piece. So basically, we're cutting out two cuffs and then one for each collar piece. Um, so this is a cuff. And let's see. I wonder if I can just like fold this in half. All right, so I have this folded in half. I'm just going to make one cut. That way the one cut produces two pieces. Again, this is of the cuff. So moments like this is why I save even the littlest pieces of interfacing. <laughs> So what we're going to do is, this is our last piece that we're cutting out. We're going to take the pattern piece for the front of the shirt, and we're going to fold it in half. Then we're going to take your interfacing, and we're going to fold that in half. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to be working off of this half mark, and then cutting everything off. Not in a more perfect square. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a little bit of a chop. here and it is folded in half by here and we're going to compare this to the slit so the slit ends right here so we want this interfacing to be just a little bit longer because we're going to be attaching it to this piece the reason that the, the size of the slit is important is because we are going to cut this corner out to the slit um, and we're doing that on the folded side. So we'll only cut the corner out um, as the length of the slit, and then this will still be attached. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, I am just doing a little bit, like a half inch this way, and then, okay. So there's that. It's okay if it's not perfect. All right, and then I'm going to just maybe about let's do about three quarters of an inch from there and then we're going to cut to the point like that and then we will unfold it and it'll produce like a V so when we do the interfacing we will attach it to that extra little piece of fabric that we cut out and then we'll, we will use this to um, create a clean edge in this slit we'll go over that when it's time to sew it so right now would be the time when you apply any ribbons or applique that you're doing so um i'm actually going to ah so I'm actually going to do the same thing that I did on my practice shirt. I'm going to place some ribbons on the front with some dangling down, and then I will have them going vertically down the uh, center of the sleeve. 
So to save time on this tutorial, I'm not going to talk about how to actually apply the ribbon to the shirt, but if you're interested and you need to know how I do it, then I do talk about it and give an in-depth description on how I apply a ribbon on the ribbon dress tutorial uh, part two, and I begin to talk about it around the 17 minute mark. So yeah, do that before you put together put together the shirt um, and that's so that you can put the ribbons directly on the inside. Now let's say you want to put together the shirt before adding any kind of applique. Keep in mind that it's pretty much impossible to do on the sleeves because you're not going to be able to sew anything on the sleeves once they're done without sewing all the way through the sleeve. If you wanted to do it on here, it's probably possible, this will, um, might be a little more difficult for you. Let's say you buy a shirt and you want to put ribbons on there, um, but you're worried about this edge seam being clean. Um, another cool way that I've seen people do it is applying the ribbon this way and then just like folding it and having it dangle off. And then once you get any ribbon or applique applied to the shirt, you know, as you want it to be applied, then we can move on to this next segment where we sew the shirt together. Hey, it's me. It's next day me. So I have all of my ribbon on the shirt right in the front. I also have the back and then I have both sleeves done here. So now all we have to do is put the shirt together. So <clears throat> before we do that, we are going to take care of this split that's on the front piece. And what I have done is I've taken that piece of interfacing that we made and I attached it to the wrong side of this uh, little block here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to, um, sorry, we're going to trim this in shape and then we will fold that remainder in like this and we will sew that. Check it. Okay, so now you go ahead and press this flat. So you'll put your shirt right facing up. And then you'll place this on top of the slit here, trying to match this point up with where your slit ends. And then what I'm going to do is try and match this up with um, about a quarter inch away from where the interfacing ends here. If you can see that. I'm going to pin it in place. So what this is going to do is it's going to finish off that slit, um, give it a nice clean finish, and it's also going to give it, um, the interfacing will make it stronger, and it will also allow the slit to kind of open up a little bit. Okay, so then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to sew right here next to the interfacing. To make sure that your seam isn't off of this fabric here and it looks pretty fine looks like I went a little too far over on this side but that's okay next what we're going to do is we are going to flip it this way so we can see our slit and then we're going to trim this close to the seam that way when you flip it with its right side up it'll look like this and then when you flip this inward, it's kind of tricky to do it at first. <clears throat> anyway, you flip this inward and then you iron it flat. 
and it provides a nice clean finish. Now what we get to do is take our back piece, let's see, where is it? And we're going to put it together with the front piece, right sides together, and match up the shoulder. So I'm going to go ahead and sew each of these shoulders. Check it. Make sure you go ahead and press these seams open. Okay, so next we're going to set the shirt aside and we're going to work on the collar. So um, let's take our actual collar piece. I have this one right here and then I have one that I applied the interfacing to. We're going to put them together, um, right sides together. And then we're going to sew, um, how can I get this in the frame? <laughs> And then we're going to sew these edges here, leaving this edge unsewn. And then trim off the excess, leaving uh, about like a quarter inch left. And then we will um, start from the opening here and flip it inside out. I mean inside right. <laughs> I forgot to mention when we trim off the excess and these corners here, um, we're actually going to trim these corners right off too, just like that. Okay, now I have my collar put together um, and it is pressed flat. Next, what we're going to do is grab the collar stand. So I have one piece of the collar stand that has interfacing on it and then I have another piece that does it similarly to how we did the um the collar um and then what we're going to do is sew the collar in in between the collar stand so I messed up the collar stand piece with the interfacing on it I put it in the wrong direction and then I sewed everything together and then after I sewed everything together I cut off the excess on the seam allowance and then when I turned it like the collar stand when I turned it inside out that's when I discovered I had put that piece on the wrong way so I had to rip everything out and then put it back together and re-sew it with a tiny little seam so uh, here's a better explanation okay so here's where I fucked up I had this like this because I figured right sides together but um this isn't the right side it has to be like this so that this is actually right sides together I don't know how I messed that up but when we sew this back on and we fold it outwards, it'll be right. So um, it's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and find the centers again, pin these, and then sew exactly where I just sewed. <laughs> Face the collar, the um, downward pointy part, away from the curve of the collar stand. Um, so as you can see, both the collar stand and the collar are facing downward. Um, so we're going to go ahead and put this in between. So I'm going to start here, sew up this way, sew across, and then when I get to the other side, I'll sew back down that way. I won't be sewing here or anywhere else just that. Okay, so we're going to take our shirt and we're going to fold it outside right. And then we're going to attach the collar. So what we want to do is have this collar stand piece with the interfacing facing outward. So this is going to be the one that we're going to attach first. And what we're going to do is, okay, so we're going to find the center. We're going to turn this around and start from the back. So once we find that center, then we're going to grab the interfacing piece and not work with the other piece. <clears throat> and then, of course, folding this in half, we'll find the center of the back. 
and connect the two and pin it and pin each side all the way up until it reaches the end here. Check it. Like so. Only pinning the interfacing side. Now because this is a lot more straight than the neck hole is, it's going to um, be a little funky. You just have to work it. Okay, so I have it all pinned on the neck hole here. I just want to point something out. Um, when I was putting these two collar stance pieces together and one was shorter with the interfacing on it um, because the interfacing made it shrink, I think. Check it. What happened was I clipped a little bit off and when I did that, I didn't think of the fact that it's going to make it shorter. So it wasn't long enough. It was just like barely long enough to reach the either sides of the slit here. So what I did was I lined it up from the slit inward and then directly in the middle, I formed a little pleat um, with whatever was in excess after I joined up the the pieces here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just stitch around, again, only the interfacing piece of the collar stand, not this one. Alright, so this is the collar sewn on now. Here's the stitch we just did. Now what we're going to do is simply grab the collar here. You can see it. And we're just going to go ahead and flip it up. And what that's going to do, it's going to kind of like naturally fold in on itself. Okay. So here's the back. This is what the stitch that we just did. And here's the inside. Pull this up. Right here is the stitch we just did. So um, the next... Maybe folding it inside out like this. Um, leaving the collar inside though, not taking it out. And the reason that we're going to do that is because what we need to do now is take the other side of the collar stand, this side right here, we need to fold it inward a little bit. Okay? And then um, if it's helpful for you, you can go ahead and press this flat as you sew it inward. That way it's easier for you to work with it. And then we will fold it back onto here. Um, and the seam that we just did, Jesus, this is hard to explain. <laughs> the seam that we just did, we're going to fold it up and then lay this Come on. So after we fold this up, then we will lay this on top of that seam. And once we do that, then we'll go ahead and stitch it. So this is done here. Um, 
I'm going to be folding this collar about in half. So if you notice how wide it is here, I'm going to fold it like, probably like that. And then it will kind of like stand up a little further from the collar stand and then fold over. This is our collar. Next thing that we're gonna do is sew the sides and the sleeves on. I'm gonna break for tonight and we will go back to that tomorrow. Hey, I'm back. So um, I have the shirt here. It's inside right, so I need to turn this inside out. Then we're gonna sew the side seam. So um, here we have the armpit. We are going to join where the armpit ends and then sew all the way down to the hem. And you do that on both sides. Okay, now next is the uh, sleeves. So we're going to leave this inside out and then grab one of the sleeves and we're going to fold this in half but with the um, the right side outside so you should be able to see your pattern here okay and then I'm going to shove this into the armhole so here's the armhole I'm going to put this in the armhole with um, with the armpit of the sleeve meeting the armpit of the shirt and then for the center part of where um, the center of the sleeve is, you're going to meet that with the shoulder seam. So go ahead and connect those two. You should have right sides of both fabrics together. And then pin. And then you need to go around and pin the sleeve to the shirt all the way down to the bottom. Um, and then we'll sew it. But when we sew it on, we're going to start off with a little bit of the, like a flap hanging off of the sleeve. Um, that way we can sew the sleeve together. Okay, so now I have the sleeve sewn onto the shirt. Now I'm going to grab it and take it out. And we're going to combine the seam to form the sleeve. So I would suggest starting at the armpit area and then sewing down to the wrist. When you sew down to the wrist, make sure that you leave a little bit of the end open and so that we can apply the cuff. Um, and let's say about an inch or inch and a half doesn't truly matter because we're, we're going to close that up anyway so even if you leave a bunch off to make it nice and easy for you that's all right so let's do that all right so now we have this hole between the sleeve and the shirt so what we're going to do is pinch the seams of the sleeve shut and then I don't really know how else to say this other than letting it kind of like fall naturally into the shirt um, and then once you do that you will pinch the seams of the shirt shut so if you notice there is a space here that doesn't have um, a stitch there's stitching here stitching right here we're going to stitch right here connecting those two um, in order to close up this hole and what you'll be doing is catching the sleeve when you make that stitch okay and as you can see there's a stitch there now and it's caught the sleeve and there's no longer a hole there. This is the cuff. So I have um, interfacing iron on both cuffs here and then I folded them in half and ironed them flat. So we'll set one aside because we're only going to work with one for now. Um, next you will fold the cuff in half and if you notice there is a folded edge and a rough edge. 
we're going to find the center of the rough edge. The rough edge is what will be on the seam and then the folded edge will be um, on the edge or on the end of the sleeve. So <clears throat> once you find the center, then you will find the center of the wrist portion of the sleeve um, on the folded side, not on the side with the seam. And then you're going to place the cuff inside of the sleeve, matching up the middle of the cuff to the middle of the sleeve. Hopefully that makes sense. Then you will pin them in place. Alright, I almost forgot to mention not to press these seams open because when we take the cuff and fold it outward, we're actually going to press the seam up in the direction of the sleeve. So before I get there, with the collar folded out, see this is the collar attached to the sleeve. So with the collar folded out, I will join the seam of the collar. And then we're going to start sewing from the edge of the collar all the way up until the stitch of the sleeve. So we'll be closing up that gap that we left in the sleeve. Check it. We want to trim off the excess of the cuff. Don't really gotta worry about trimming off the excess of the uh, sleeve. So once you get off the cuff, then you can just kind of like taper off on the sleeve. And then this corner here, we will cut that corner off, being careful not to knit the stitch. Okay, so go ahead and do the other sleeve and then we are on our last step after that, which is the hem. Okay, so the last step is the hem. Now you can do the hem a few different ways. My favorite way to do a hem is a rolled hem. So that's where you would leave an inch for the hem and then um, fold it up half an inch and then fold it again for another half inch. Basically it rolls up and it provides like a nice clean finish. But what I chose for this shirt is to just fray block the edge and fold it up. So here you can tell that I used a serger on it. If you don't have a serger, you can just do a zigzag stitch or you can use fray block or fabric glue. They're basically the same thing. And then what I'm gonna do after this is fold it up about an, um, I don't really like it being an inch. So I think I'm gonna fold it up about three quarters of an inch. And then I'm just going to stitch um, maybe half an inch away from the folded edge. So um, when you do a hem, you always start at the seam. I also have this seam um, serged, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold the uh, seam allowance to one side. Then I'm going to fold this up and match the outside seam to the inside seam. And I want it to be about three quarters of an inch. So we'll pin that. And then I'm going to pin all the way around, folding it up just three quarters of an inch. And when I take it to the sewing machine, I'm going to sew it at an inch <clears throat> and then iron it flat. All right, here is the finished product. We just did the hem, the sleeves, we have the collar. I have these sewn right in there. And then the back. Whoops. <laughs> here we go. All right, so let's see what Mr. Blake thinks. What do you think? It's cool. 
play this part right here. What right, part? Right, right. Let's see it. Right here. That's cool. Do you like the back? <laughs> All right, I hope that was a very helpful tutorial for you. As always, if you have any questions, get at me. It's probably easier to um, get a hold of me on Twitter. So my hashtag is, not my hashtag, my at. My at is linked below. So if you have any questions about the ribbon shirts or, you know, whatever else, just get at me on there. Um, there will be more tutorials in the future. Don't know exactly what they're going to be yet, but they'll be there. It just takes time. So, yeah, I hope that was helpful or whatever you want it to be. And I will see you on the next one. Bye, bye.